Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great video. And today we're going to be talking about variable frequency drives, VFDs, constant pressure pump systems. They're known by a lot of different names, so stay tuned and you'll learn about what I think about the Pentair IntelliDrive and how it stacks up against the competition. All right, so here we are with the Pentec IntelliDrive. Uh, let's just first kind of start off by talking about uh, what the capabilities are uh, a little bit with this drive. So this is a, a constant pressure system or variable frequency drive, like I mentioned, and the whole idea is that it's going to provide smooth, consistent pressure throughout the system. It's uh, I've talked about it in a lot of videos in terms of the viability of variable frequency drives, the installation costs, operational costs. So if you want to learn more about the money behind it uh, in terms of energy consumption, efficiency, what's the right application, we've done that in a previous video, um, so I'm not going to focus too much on that. But again, back to the capabilities. The Pentec IntelliDrive is very unique in the constant pressure world, specifically because it uh, is not focusing on the proprietary elements that some of the other competitors do focus on, meaning that the IntelliDrive can hook to a huge range of different manufacturers' motors. Uh, it works great for both submersible well pumps, so your deep well pump applications, as well as your above ground pump applications. And I would say that that's definitely something that's unique about their, uh, their PID or their IntelliDrive offering, um, their VFD offering, I'm tripping over my tongue, um, the fact that you can run almost any motor, the only exception, the only motor that I've ever come across that these will have problems with is the Franklin Electric two-wire motors. And that's because Franklin Electric has, again, that proprietary technology. Their two-wire motors use a centrifugal switch to engage from the start winding to the run winding internally to the pump. And this particular drive doesn't like that. That said, there are tons of other submersible two-wire pumps on the market or motors on the market that this will run as well as, like I mentioned, above ground, submersible, three-wire, three-phase, three-wire, single-phase. So the, the, the options are very broad. Um, these IntelliDrives come in a few different sizes. You have uh, the way that they call them out, PID 10, 20, 30, and 50 and those numbers correlate with horsepower. So the 10 is capable of a one horsepower, the 20 is capable of a two horse, 30, three horse, and 50, five horse, uh, all accordingly. The one thing to keep in mind, as I mentioned, they'll run single phase or three phase motors, is that the current rating at those different horsepower ranges is important. So for example, a PID 20, though it can run a three phase two horsepower motor, it's not able to run a two horsepower motor on single phase. So make sure that you check the specs for whichever drive that you're considering if you plan on operating it in a single phase situation. Keep in mind the amperage. The amperage is going to be important, uh, especially on your above ground pumps, that you don't exceed whatever that particular drive is rated for. Those are all going to be well labeled, well listed. Uh, we'll have some resources in the description below if you want to check these out to purchase for yourself or if you're just simply here to learn more about the ins and outs of these drives then stick around because we're going to definitely get more into it. So I think the next thing that we want to do is let's, uh, I guess first before we pop the cover off, let's just look at the keypad real quickly uh, if I can get it open, move it out of the way. So the keypad on these IntelliDrives I'm a huge fan of. They are the most simple keypad that I've ever run into with regard to a variable frequency controller. They are so simple to set up. If you want to change your system pressure, you hit the PSI button. If you want to go in and change some of the menu options, it's the main menu. Uh, if this experiences any faults or errors, such as a short to ground or a motor overload or whatever your problem is, it doesn't give you codes or blink lights at you. It, in plain English, will tell you on the screen what the problem is, making it much quicker to diagnose, much simpler to diagnose. And again, we're staying out of that whole proprietary element where you've got to know the lingo to fix the thing. It, it, gives, it, it makes it a very serviceable unit. So easy interface, very serviceable unit, very readily displays all problems. It will tell you when the system is powered, what the pressure is in the system. Uh, just, just great. Uh, so let's go ahead and take the cover off and we'll take a look inside here. 
All right, so we've got the cover off here, and I just wanted to take the cover off to show how simple everything is on the inside of these units. Uh, you'll notice that there's not a terrible mess of wires. This thing is fully installed. It has a motor hooked over to it, uh, hooked up to it over here, uh, and, and it's just very clean and nice in here. And what I really like is that your connections, you have plenty of room to work, and then like most of your, your big connections can you can take them apart like that so that you can make them up at a better angle and you're not working with such difficult angles. That's the case with your incoming power as well. That's just a plug that you can do your fitting and then shove that back in. It also makes disconnecting the unit for doing resistance tests and so forth on your motor very easily. So troubleshooting further down the field aside from just initial installation is kind of what's in mind here. Um, a couple of things that are really nice. You've got two inputs and then you've got an output. These can be used for a variety of things. You can hook them to external alarms. We've got a little moisture sensor over off to the side here that's actually wired up to one of the inputs right now. And so the idea is that if this was installed in some sort of an underground vault, that that moisture sensor would detect if there was moisture around the unit and it would automatically disable the unit to protect the entire system. That's just one example of a lot of different things that you could do. In a situation where you had this installed with a pump in a cistern, you would be able to hook some float switches up in here if you wanted to, either an alarm float to let you know the tank is empty, or you could uh, hook up here a float that would prevent the pump from running if the tank was empty in order to ensure that you wouldn't ever run your pump dry and cause damage to the pump and motor. So these, these inputs are very nice, these outputs, the, the the one output in there, it gives you a lot of flexibility to integrate and incorporate a relatively complex system if need be um, with such a basic and simple and easy to use controller. All right, and so also worth mentioning now that we're back out uh, of the unit is this is a nice steel enclosure. Um, it is powder coated. It's a NEMA 3R, so it's rain tight, uh, is intended to be installed outdoors. I will mention, don't put it in direct sunlight if you can avoid it or if you live in a really hot area um, because these units can only handle about 100 and 40-ish degrees or so internal temperature and it only takes about 100 degrees outside to for the sun baking down on it to, to cause some problems. So keep that in mind, but that's the case with any controller that you buy, not specifically this one. Um, and the other thing to, to worth mentioning on these IntelliDrives is they have a wide array of built-in motor protection. So you've got overcurrent, undercurrent, um, you've got short circuit protection, you've even got some surge protection in these systems. So not only are they designed to protect themselves, they're designed to protect the uh, all the other equipment, like your pump and motor, and, and that goes a long way with the longevity of a system, um, just having those extra built-in protections that you don't have to pay extra for uh, is definitely nice, and, and it is because becoming more and more commonplace with these types of controllers. So I would say that if you're even considering a variable frequency drive that uh, you take a long hard look at the Pentair IntelliDrive and if you're really really on the fence then get a hold of us here at RC Worst. We'll walk you through those final little decisions that you're making in order to hopefully convince you that the IntelliDrive really is the way to go. It's just a fantastic versatile unit that offers a great price point. One of the best warranties that I've encountered with this type of equipment and it's just so easy to use. It, it really is a no-brainer. The fact that it has what they call the Link 2.0 um, and, and can actually communicate with your Wi-Fi networks to alert you if you travel a lot of problems. And, and so there's just so many other elements, so many other layers of complexity that you can add on to these units, yet they remain just so simple and basic and affordable. So again, make sure you consider this as a VFD option for you. They are available on rcworst.com. If you have any questions, get a hold of our uh, support team. We're happy to help you out. Um, hopefully that was a nice introduction to the Pentair IntelliDrive. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. We will catch you next time.